Let us begin in any comfortable seated position. I'm choosing to sit in this Japanese seat at the moment. If that's uncomfortable, um, you may pop a block underneath. And I've put mine up um, halfway now. So if I sit on that and I place it a little bit higher than where my feet might be, um, that could be a way of being able to sit like this with a little bit more ease, but no pressure. If you want to sit on a chair, even that's okay too. Um, letting your hands come to rest, palms up or down, whichever is more comfortable for you. I would love us to start by closing the eyes. And if that's not available to you, please steady your gaze somewhere away from the screen, anything that doesn't flicker or move. And to properly arrive, let's tilt the pelvis a little bit, whether you're circling around the pelvic area or you're just tilting forwards and backwards, trying to connect to that that you are sitting on and making the decision when you pause these movements to really lower towards the sit bones, to take a deep, a slow breath in through the nose and have a sigh out. So in this way, we relaxed into the belly but we've also released our jaw. And uh, with that, keeping the eyes closed, we'll go for a few rounds of Brahmari today. Um, so there's a lot of wild weather coming up for you. That might mean as much as for me that we're getting a bit unsettled or fearful. And I find um, Brahmari very useful as with the sound and the vibration. It has such a beautiful impact, not only on the physical body, but also on the nervous system. So very simply done. We're breathing in through the nose. And we're keeping the mouth closed and the humming the breath out. Let us begin this together. Breathing in. Now you serve to rest. much as we're taking in food and water, but also digesting in a slightly different sense our practices. So noticing how you are taking this practice in 
stay. I hope your seat is comfortable so you can maintain that for a bit longer. And with the next inhalation, just reaching the arms up, interlacing the fingers above the head. And then as you're breathing out, pushing the palms of the hands forward, beginning to round, tucking the chin in towards the chest. And as you inhale, reach the palms up to the ceiling. And when you're exhaling, soften the hands down behind the head. Let the shoulders relax as you're inhaling. And on the exhale now, turning towards the right. And you can always do a lot less and the arms can stay low if required. Inhaling, center yourself. And then exhaling and go to the other side. The inhale, come back to the center. Let the right hand drop and the left arm might lean over the head as you're breathing out, coming into a side bend. On the inhale, windmill the arms around. On the exhale, side bending to the other side. As you inhale, reach both arms up. And on the elbow, circle the arms now behind your back and gently place the fingertips down if you can reach, if your seat isn't too high. Otherwise, hands into the lower back, starting to open up to the chest. Chin can stay tucked in. And you may guide the chin carefully up, opening through the throat into a back bend. Take a breath. And your next exhale, then release that from the spine. Then the head comes up. And we'll repeat as you inhale, reach your arms up. But when you're interlacing the fingers now, changing the interlace of the fingers and then pushing the palms of the hands forward on the elbows, starting to round, tucking the chin. Inhaling, reaching the arms up. Exhaling, maybe hands come behind the head. Let the shoulders soften as you inhale. And on the exhale now, let's twist to the other side. Inhaling, returning into center, and then exhaling, twisting across. The inhale, come back to center, and this time it's the left hand that falls as we're going back into a side, then exhale. Inhale, a windmill of the arms and our breaths back into the side bend. So inhale, reaching again, both arms up. And with the our breaths now, draw the hands down all the way, maybe upon your thighs. And we're reaching gently forward. So I'd ask you to remove any support that you might have been sitting on and finding your way now into an extended child's pose. Let your shoulders drop open. The head can stay on the floor or be off the ground, whichever feels easier for you. I'm currently practicing with the head off the floor. Your fingers will be spread out onto the ground. And I would love you to establish just simple, deep breathing. So a breath that it doesn't cause much effort or need much effort to be practiced. If you are comfortable with the Jai technique, that might be a lovely addition to this practice. And as you start to establish a breath that is hopefully sustainable throughout the movements, I'm also inviting you to start noticing what else is going on such as the mind being very busy, and uh, that is the aspect for this week. I would love you to focus on the chitter-chatter of the mind. So while we won't engage into the thoughts themselves, we're starting to notice each one as it comes and as it goes. And please do maintain breath and thought awareness as you're inhaling, 
Coming up onto all fours. Now, tucking toes under. If this is enough for you, you might practice a cat pose from here. Otherwise, can you lift your knees up? Also, around your spine, but extend into downward facing dog. And then inhale, let's roll the spine forward. Again, keep your core engaged, plank or a kneeling plank, absolutely your choice. If you're on your toes, push forward on the toes, rounding back up, down the facing dog. On the inhale, lowering both knees again onto the mat, untucking the toes. And as we find an all four stance here, your choice is, of course, to come onto fists, cushion up your wrists if you need to, and you could also do some of these movements um, from a down dog if the knee's down, is fine. But let us inhale and extend the right leg back now. So I'm flexing my foot here. I'd ask you to do the same, leaving the hips to face towards the floor. And if that is possible, reaching the left arm forward, thumb turned up towards the ceiling. On the hour breath, then drawing elbow and knee and lowest together under the body. And on the inhale, extending out long. On the exhale, curling under, knee to nose. Inhaling, extending the body out again. Enjoy the bubbles, arm forward, leg back. Exhaling, roll back under, knee, elbow, nose, curling in. Going for two more. As you inhale, find your length. On the out breath, curling in. And after you've completed your last one, please extend your body once more. And again, there's lots of options here. As you could bend the knee, turn the thumb down, swing your arm around by your side. You're welcome to hold here and just lift, but you might also be able to grab your foot. And in that case, bring the foot into the hand. Your gaze lightly forward, the chest is opening a bit. Maybe your hip flexors opening. And then release. Hand down, knee down, and tucking the toes under and stretching your hips back all the way to the heels. Modified child's pose, so not quite a puppy. Allowing a bit of space into the feet as well in a gentle way. On the next inhalation, returning again to all fours, finding your stance, untucking the toes. We'll change sides, so while you're extending your left leg back on an inhalation, please flex the foot again, let your toes shine down. And as an option, the right arm can extend forward. If it does, turn the thumb up to the ceiling, inhaling here. And as you're exhaling, drawing together your elbow, your knee and your nose. And as you inhale, extend your body long. On the out breath, curling back in. Going for three more, finding your own pace, lengthening as you're inhaling. Rounding and curling in as you're exhaling. Two more to go. Keep a slower pace. Deliberate movement and you might notice some bubbles. They're there just as they are thoughts. Once you've completed your rounds, you will extend again. Maybe bending the left knee, turning the right thumb to the floor and circling your arm alongside the body. Either stay here or take a hold of your foot. And then starting to lift the foot into the hand or the knee a little bit higher. The arm by the side might be lifting. Beautiful. And then releasing that down, hand down, knee down, tuck the toes under, and stretch your hips right down towards the heels again for another modified child. That opens a bit into the soles of the feet and into the toes. On the next inhale, Coming up onto all fours. 
your choice to stay here or make this a puppy. Otherwise, lean the weight a little bit forward, lift your knees off the ground, and round up for a downward facing dog. On the next breath in, let's lift our right leg up towards the ceiling. Again, please do flex the foot for hip alignment. And then bring the knee forward, landing the foot forward and bringing the other knee down. So there's plenty of opportunity to help the foot to the front. Swinging your left foot just slightly behind you. Allow your nose to rest upon the knee as you inhale. And then use the front foot. And as you breathe out, rolling yourself up. Opening through the hips here as we prepared with the foot behind us and inhale to lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Now when you're exhaling, circle the arms around and interlace your hands behind your back and extend the arms down the back. Let them slide down. Keep a little squeeze between the shoulder blades, lifting through the sternum. Maybe your gaze is turned upwards. And when you're exhaling, start to lean towards the bent knee here at the front. Maybe your right shoulder lands on the inside of the knee. Maybe your head becomes heavy. And you can lift your arms away from the back, but only if that is okay for your shoulders. Allow yourself a few moments of breathing in this form. The humble warrior on the knee, getting very similar benefits here. A bit of hip opening, shoulder release. There's a forward bend in there. And then let's release our hands down to the inside of the front foot. Tuck the back toes under, lift the knee off the ground and land your foot down onto the floor. Keep the hips open with that, your toes are a bit pointing outward. Let your left arm swing and let that rest behind your back gently. Use a good amount of weight in the front foot and take an inhale to reach your right arm forward. I'm already starting to shift weight to the back foot. And when you're next inhaling, keep your right knee in the bend and paint like a half rainbow across the sky as you're reaching up into the right hand fingertips for an exalted warrior shape. So oftentimes here the front knee collapses, so we want to keep the strength in both of our feet. Arch is active, back leg is strong, arm reaching up only an option, and so is the point of gaze. Inhale here. And as you're exhaling now, unwind your arms. Keep your stands for your chew. Your gaze now moves towards the same hand that is at the front. Finding strong stands across the feet and getting that sense of pulling the feet in towards each other. Mm. Noticing the thoughts that arise without any judgment, just awareness. And as you release your arms, also lift your back heel off the ground. Take a breath in to extend the arms up for a high lunge. And with the hour breath, raise the hands down onto the mat or fours or downward facing dog. On the next inhalation now, let's roll the spine forward and come back into plank or kneeling plank. On the elbows, keep your elbows close and lower down gently up to the front of your body. You can keep the hands underneath the shoulders, the elbows snug in by the sides, the tops of the feet are on the ground. And as you take your next inhale, the upper body is waving up for a gentle cobra. Keep that flowing as you exhale, lower the head back down. Inhaling away for a gentle cobra. 
and exhale to release again to the mat. And the next one, we will wave up as well, but you might stay here. Grounding down through the tops of the feet, unless you've got lower back pain. In that case, you might lift the feet off the floor, squeezing the shoulder blades together and drawing them down the spine. Elbows are still close as we breathe in and breathe out. With the next in-breath, you might maintain the shape, but press into the hands to change it. And as you tuck your toes under, now we're reaching the hips up and back, keeping the hands in the same place as where they were before into a puppy form. From there, there's only a choice here, but you can lift the knees off the ground and grow up the dog. Softening maybe through the knees as you lengthen your tailbone up. And if there's any movement that you require at this stage, move the body. You can walk out through your legs. You can move through your back, the hips. And on the next inhalation, let us lift the left leg up and the same here, please flex the foot. And on the out breath, taking your foot forward and the back knee to the ground, whatever comes first, helping the foot if it needs assistance. And then take the right foot and tuck the toes, swing the foot behind you. And when you're taking an in breath, lower your nose towards your knee. And with the elbow breath, bring straight into the front foot, roll up through the spine. And as you're rising, we're opening out to the sides. The arms are lifting on the in breath. And then the elbow breath, circling the arms around. And then the hands reach behind the back, changing the interlace of the fingers. So it feels a bit unusual. Draw the arms down the spine, lifting through the sternum. Your choice of lifting your gaze as well, taking a breath in. And with the exhale then, leaning your left shoulder in the direction of the inside of the left knee. You can release the head down. You could also lift your arms away from your back. One step at a time, assessing where you're at. If your shoulders are achy, keep the arms resting on your back. But if it's possible to lean forward, allow yourself the release from the neck. Then let your hands come down to the inside of the front foot. Tuck your back toes under, lift your knee off the floor, round the foot down, keep the toes slightly diagonal, pointing forward. And now let your right arm circle behind your back. Use the front foot as you inhale, reaching the left arm forward. And then again, as if you're painting a half rainbow, draw that right over you, keeping the front knee in a bend for an exalted warrior form. You can use any measures of support to get to this place. But I might ask you to do one thing, if your body it requires more gentleness, you can always support yourself. Watching here in your mind's eye, the lift of the arches of the feet for alignment of knee and strength in the back leg. Inhale again. And then with the exhalation, keep your upright stance, but extend your arms up. Warrior two. Drishti is still at your left hand. But now the hand is facing forward, finding your inner strength, maybe standing even taller as you engage. So the feet are trying to pull towards each other. Stay for another breath. And when you're inhaling, starting to lift the back heel, reaching the arms up for a high lunge. And when you're exhaling, let your hands come to rest down and step the foot forward this time. On the inhale, lengthen your spine to the front of your mat. 
on the our breath, folding forward. Let's take an inhale as we stay in the forward bend and engage the lower abdomen as you're breathing out, starting to roll yourself up into standing. Give the shoulders a little shrug and bring the arms down alongside the body. So we're coming to stand in a mountain pose. If you were to have a look down at your feet, you could choose to align the outer edges of the feet, whether your big toes are together or your feet are at hip distance apart. So nice and tall stance, engaging from the feet up through the legs and extending to the crown of the head in your mountain pose. Now from this mountain, let us take an inhale and lift the arms up. On the exhale, soften the knees and folding the posture forward. On the inhale, take a half lift. And with the out breath now, stepping your right foot back into a lunge. As you're inhaling, collapse the whole lunge. And then use the out breath to roll up into stand. On the inhale, extend your arms back up to a high lunge. We've been there before. And allow yourself on the next out breath to lean the spine a little forward. If arms lifted is too much, hands at the heart would be great. So you might focus here on the alignment of the hips as you allow them to keep parallel. Your spine is long, there's a gentle engagement in the lower abdomen. So for those of you who would like to, on the inhale, reach the arms forward. Now we're taking fists of fire and we're drawing our right knee up towards the chest. You can hold on if you need to or leave a big toe on the ground as you inhale extending the arms up and as you exhale circle them around and give your knee a loving hug in towards the chest again a position in which you're welcome to stay if you want a little bit challenge your um, left hand reaches for the knee and you're taking a breath in to extend the right arm back and at the same time come into a twist You're feeling confident to take a hold of the outer edge of the foot, you could. You could also slide the hand a bit back and hold on to the outside of the thigh. In both cases, there's an option of extending the leg forward. Let's bend the knee. Inhale, lift the arms, even if you're tapping down. And on the out breath, Let's step the foot back into a lunge and from the lunge stepping into a downward facing dog. As your next inhaling, roll the spine forward, plank or kneeling plank. And your elbows lower gently down into the front of the body. Now, while you keep your left hand where it has landed, the right arm extends along the side of the body. Tops of the feet are flat on the ground for now, but you might choose to bend your right knee. You can hold just here, or you can take a hold of ankle or outer side of the foot. Left hand is still underneath the shoulder, and as you inhale, keep the straight leg down, pressing through the top of the foot, lifting head and chest, and if the hand and the foot are connected, you might bring the foot into the hand. Keeping a little bit of level down into the left hand to ground you. And maybe you can float the left hand and the left foot off the floor. These are just extensions, nothing you wouldn't want to do necessarily. And then we're releasing all of this down. Let the legs relax, the hands land back by the sides. And then take an inhale as you come up. Do tuck your toes under, stretch the hips up and back rather than towards the heels. So we do want a forward bend, but not too deep. 
Let the shoulders roll open. Take a few breaths. If you are comfortable here, you can lift the knees off the floor. Otherwise, your next step might be an all four stand to enable you to move from. With the next inhale, let your right leg extend. With the exhale, back knee can come down to the floor again. You can land the foot forward, keeping back toes tucked under. Let the nose collapse to the knee as you're inhaling and roll yourself up as you're exhaling. Stretching the arms once more up towards the sky. So your choice, knee on or off the mat, hands coming to the heart, and we're starting to twist towards the right hand side. Keep yourself nice and tall to begin with. On the inhale, maybe the arms are extending out to the sides. You're welcome to place one hand into the lower back. As you're exhaling, reach with your front hand towards the floor, opening up into a light twist. So many choices. Arms could be fully extended, or one behind the back. And then release that. Let your hand land on the outer side of the foot. Lift the knee off the floor as you inhale. Step your feet at the front of the mat together and fold. On the inhale, choose a half lift. On the exhale, bend in again. Stay here while you're inhaling and use the lower abdominal muscles for the out breath to roll yourself up slowly. Lifting the shoulders up on the inhale, and then gently shrugging them back and down on the albrus, returning into the mountain. So important to be in the mountain in between, especially when we think about balance. So you might lift all your toes off the floor. Use that as an opportunity to also realign outer edges of the feet. And then keeping that engagement of the feet, but softening your toes back down onto the ground. You might feel as if you're standing a little bit taller. As you're next inhaling, reach your arms back up towards the ceiling. Soften the knees and breathe out to slowly fold forward. On the inhale, lengthen your spine to the front. And when you're exhaling now, stepping your left foot back into a lunge. Let yourself soften down, collapse the lunge on the inhale and roll it up on the exhale. While you inhale, let your arms extend. And then as you're breathing out, you can lean a little bit forward. Um, only into a diagonal and if your shoulders need a break or the neck, the hands can rest to the heart space. Otherwise, I suggest you keep the arms long, the spine long too. The breathing in and those of you who want to reach forward can do so now. And then pull in with your fists as you're drawing your left knee up towards the chest. And on the inhale, extending your arms up to the ceiling. And on the exhale, circling the arms around and taking a hug of the knee towards the chest. So standing tall here, that's an opportunity to stay. If you like, opposite hand stays on the knee and you can take an in rest to reach your left arm back as you're opening your body out towards the side. Keep a tall stance. If you feel an extension is appropriate, you could reach with the front hand outer edge of the foot, but you could also slide the hand back to the outer thigh. <laughs> Do not look at the screen, keep looking to the steady space beside you. If you would like to extend the front leg, that's your opportunity. We'll bend the knee again, 
Inhaling, reach the arms up. Exhaling, step it all the way back. For a downward facing dog. Deep in breaths and out breaths as you're landing. All fours at downward dog. And with the next inhalation, roll the spine forward, plank or kneeling plank, and descending carefully to the mat as you're exhaling. Now this time, it's the other hand that stays underneath the shoulder, and the left arm extends along the side. You can choose to bend the left knee, and this is absolutely enough or you can reach for the foot. If you will use the straight leg on the ground, the hand on the ground, maybe the foot comes into the hand or you're lifting your arm and your knee a little, holding here in the half bow pose or half danasana. But you could also lift the straight leg and the hand by your side, a little bit off the floor, finding a hold here in another half bow pose. Breathing in and breathing out. And then releasing the hand back down, the foot back down. On the inhale, coming up onto all fours. And the same here, not too much of a full bend. So tuck the toes under, stretch your hips up and back for the puppy. If the puppy is where you're at today, please stay. Otherwise, knees can come off the floor for a downward facing dog. I'd love you to take a breath in. To open the mouth and have an open mouth side. Relax your jaw. Maybe even move the jaw around a bit. If that triggers the yawn, don't be surprised. That's what it often does. And let that all out. Relaxing and softening through the face. And then with your next inhalation, lifting the left leg back up towards the sky. And with the out breaths, you can land your back knee, you can land the front foot forward, helping making all those adjustments that you might need. And as you take an inhale, let your nose lower to the knee. And as you're exhaling, curling up through the spine, with the inhale, lifting and extending through the arms, and bringing our hands down to the chest and starting to turn towards the left. Keep yourself upright in the spine, just a little twist and turn. You can stay here or on the in-breath, extend the arms out to about shoulder height. And on the out-breath, hand to the thigh or fingertips to the floor. While the upper arm may be extended, it could also rest into the lower back, focusing more on the twisting aspect of this form. Then release your hand down outside of the foot, tuck the toes under, lift the back knee off the ground and step your foot forward. Taking a half lift as you're inhaling and folding forward again while you're exhaling. Wait for another out breath, support yourself with lower belly muscles and roll up into standing. Take a shrug off the shoulders up as you inhale and let them roll down as you're breathing out. I find that the half bow pose is almost like a dancer. So I suggest for practicing the dancer. If you need a wall, please hold on to the wall. Otherwise, you can try freestanding. There's no obligation to do anything in this practice, as you are aware of. You could reach your right hand out to the side, maybe starting to lift the right foot as you bend your knee. If it is possible to catch the outer side of the foot, do so, bringing your knees back together. Your left hand can touch the wall or can reach upwards. And 
as you inhaling, expand your chest. If you're holding onto the foot, bring the foot into the hand. Keep your gaze open, your heart open, and the knee is moving backwards, but straight behind you rather than opening through the hips. Now we need a smile for our own audience. And then release that foot down, arms down. Give yourself a few movements or wiggles. Take a couple of deeper breaths. And then we will change sides. So we might open the left hand, shifting the weight as we bend the left knee. Your choice to stay here or reach for the foot. Please bring your knees together and lifting the right arm if that suits. Either just opening through the chest as the knee comes up behind you or actively bringing a foot into the hand. Keep your chest open, your gaze lifted, maybe your arm is lifted. Right as if you were lying on the ground, one leg long, one knee bent. And then release that, step your foot down, release the arms, move yourself gently. Let's take another deep inhale, but now as slow and as long as possible, our breaths and let the energy travel right down into the feet that are holding you on the ground. We'll step our feet quite wide apart now. And you could turn yourself sideways on your mat. Um, so you've got a good grip with the feet on the floor. Let us soften the knees as we inhale. And then slowly folding down on the exhale. My hands are just sliding down the legs until I find a place on the ground. If you need a block here, that's a good idea to have one. Now, let us bring a deep bend into the right knee and take the hands across towards the right foot. The toes can be turned outwards if that's easier for you, and you can definitely stay here. I'm exploring the lengthening on your ductor side, the inside of the thigh. If you want to go deeper, you could lower down to sit upon the heel for Skandasana. You might bring the sole of your left foot off the floor and reach out through the ball of the foot. Any of you feel playful today at all, you can lift the left arm and point the palm in the direction of your toes. And if you feel really solid, you could try and pull back with the right elbow. If you sit down from there, at least we're not far away from the ground. Wherever you've moved to, bring the hands back down, lift your hips up and come over to the other side as you bring a bend into the left knee. And again, this is absolute sufficient. I would ask you to focus on the legs on the inner thigh. If you want more, come to sit towards the heel, lift the sole of the foot off the ground and start pressing out from the ball of the foot. So we're coming into that high heel shoe or stiletto asana position. If you feel this is yours, you can stay or you can move the uh, right palm in the direction of the toes. And if you want to engage your core, pulling the left elbow back. Nothing we have to do. All bubbles are part of the joy that we bring in. And then we release the hands back down, lifting our hips back up. And we will turn our toes back to the front edge of the mat, bringing the hands to either side, and then slide the foot forward and come to sit on the mat. It's always a good place to be. I would ask you to keep your block close rather than at the front end of the mat, somewhere in the middle. So we've got that for in a moment. I would ask you <clears throat> from this place though, to extend your legs out long, bending the knees from there. If you feel this is difficult for you to even sit or consider folding forward, roll up the end of your mat, 
pop yourself onto the roll and we will all walk out the sit bones just shuffling a little bit from side to side to get that effect of feeling more grounded keep the fingertips on the floor take a breath in look at your toes as they're pointing up it and on the out breath the knees are bent so much that you could lean your belly onto your thighs Keep it there and let your hands adjust forward so the shoulders are back at ease. Leaving your gaze at your toes, keeping the length for the amount of breaths you're taking in. And then as you're exhaling, melting forward. It's okay to lower the head towards the space between the knees. It's okay to straighten the legs out, but only if that is pain free across your lower back. If you're feeling any discomfort here, bend your knees more, support belly with thighs. No matter how far you've gotten into the shape, closing the eyes for a little while and allowing yourself deeper, longer out breaths. With the next inhalation, lengthening halfway from your form and then walking or sliding the hands back to sit upright. And ask you to extend the legs out in front of you. Take your block or book or whatever you've got there. Even a rolled up blanket uh, could do the job here. I'm after the fish to um, open a bit more through the chest. If you need anything under the head, please place a cushion behind or a second block in a T-shape. Now, you can reach with your fingers towards the block behind you. If you don't have a block, you might also just lower down onto the forearms here. Keep your chin tucked in. Point out through your toes, legs together. If you've got a block underneath, slide the block up so it rests right underneath your spine, lower edge at the bra line, and carefully align your spine over the block. If the head can fall back all the way, beautiful. If not, place that cushioning underneath the head to uh, maintain a more comfortable position for the neck. Let the arms drop open and if you're using something underneath um, your upper body, you could slide these shoulder blades to touch the outer sides of the block or your book. Remember, I'm giving you options to choose from. Stay active in the legs, pointing out your toes and invite for three breaths a lift from the sternum to arise. So basically breathing right into our heart center. After you've released your breath that you're in currently from your nostrils, let the arms come back in unless your elbows are already underneath. I would love you to tuck the elbows in by your side, start to engage the chin in, press the hands, forearms into the floor as you're lifting halfway up to sit, take the block out from underneath, and lie all the way down onto your back. We still have a block or a cushion by our sides in reach as the feet are stepping now onto the mat. Please feel free to adjust your back, keeping your feet at about hip distance apart. Let us tilt the pelvis for the inhale so the spine flattens onto the ground. And then starting to engage your buttocks muscles and lifting the hips off the ground just enough so you can slide a support underneath the sacrum. Please make sure that it's not much higher up the spine than that. 
for keeping the lower vertebra safe. If you're happy to do so, let the arms open and lifting one knee at a time over the chest. This is already sufficient, but you might also extend your feet up towards the ceiling. Let your legs soften, let your whole body soften, making these as effortless for yourself as is possible. If that means your knees are bending a bit more towards the chest, you have less to do with the legs themselves, that's fine too, as long as the feet are building the highest point. You can close the eyes. And this is your first opportunity in a more relaxed position to focus again on your thinking. What have you been thinking about the moment you entered the shape? What's going on in the mind right now? Where even does the mind go to? Past, present, future. Allowing each thought to be for what it is, rather than analyzing it or wishing it to stay or go away. Just being there with your thoughts. Yoga, Chitta, Vritti, Nirodaha. Yoga is the sensation of the fluctuation of the mind. Which also reminds us that yoga is not necessarily about the postures themselves, just one of the eight limbs of our practice. Allowing your knees to bend back in towards the chest. If you like, you can return the arms for support by the side. And you may want to stand, step one foot down after the other. Let your feet touch the floor and feeling the contact of the feet and potentially the blood flow back into the feet. Whenever you feel that's a bit more regulated, engage the buttocks muscles just enough to lift off the block, draw the block out from underneath you and lower your back again onto the floor. Feel free to let the arms already drift away from your body. If you feel you're ready for Shavasana, please lie into it. Otherwise, you might have a windscreen wiper movement here of the knees rocking for a moment from side to side, releasing any potential tension in the back, in the hip area. And then maybe joining into a supported or full Shavasana pose. If any judgment, especially when you become very comfortable, that's the only thing that really matters, that we can let go of our physical body, finding our personal space to relax into. And you can rest assured that the thoughts are returning at this stage. You're getting a little bit more comfortable with them. Noticing that whatever thoughts are arising, you're usually responding in one way or the other. When there's extreme thoughts of pure joy or deep sadness, we often get agitated. Whether that's in a more positive, excited way, or whether that's in a um, deep, darker mood. Our mind is able to fluctuate from one extreme to the other in a split second of time. 
starting to notice that none of these thoughts need to stick around at all, or they sometimes choose to do so, it's your power of awareness to allow them to come and go. While you're staying in Shavasana, and if you're enjoying the observation of thoughts, you can stay with that. But you might also be able to take it a little bit deeper. Resting in awareness, within the full scape of your body. in the full scape of your breath. Body, breath, expressing themselves moment by moment. Life unfolding here and now in the body, in awareness. You're ready, let go of body and breath, allowing them to move into the background. They are still there, but they've moved somewhere less dominant. For a little time attending again to the stream of thought, rather than being carried away by comfortably on the bank of the thoughts, sitting maybe in your mind, the banks of a river, thoughts, the stream that's flowing by. Allowing individual thoughts, if and when they arise, to be seen, felt, recognized, and known. As thoughts, as events in the field of awareness. Recognizing them as mental events, occurrences, secretions of the thinking mind, independent of their content and their emotional charge. Even as that content and emotional charge are also seen and known. Resting in an awareness of the arising and passing away of thoughts and feelings. The mindscape, some overwhelmingly obvious, some quite subtle, some masquerading as commentary, others as scaffolding, others as neither simply returning over and over again to the frame, 
and the, the mind is carried off looking for thoughts or emotions or mood indications just resting in awareness and letting them all come to you Thoughts arise on their own in the field of awareness to whatever degree that you moment by moment by moment and breath by breath as you lie here. So you right now live your life connected. To awareness. In the present moment. Allowing the breath to start to deepen. And you may choose to take this moment awareness of thoughts with you into your day. But for now, choose to move a little, increase your breathing. You could choose to bend your knees from there, roll over onto your side. Bringing your way back to a seated form, unless you've got extra time to spare. But also to stay in Shavasana for a bit longer. If you're completing the practice with me, let's draw the hands together at the heart. Touching for a moment your thumbs up to the forehead and maybe allowing a subtle bow of the head. If you would like to set that intention of following with awareness where the mind goes today or throughout the week. Before you draw your hands to the heart, connecting to our higher self, where we're extending to each other gently. Namaste.